Hello, what's up everybody? Uh, Pragmatic Addict here, welcome back to another review. So today we are going to be sitting down talking about the new Shudder film, Christmas Bloody Christmas. Uh, yeah, it's, it's got this poster with this tagline. C because you can't say, better watch out. So, upon seeing this movie, I was not planning to see it at all. Um, really for no reason. Uh, I just, you know, I never saw a trailer. Uh, there was movies I was more interested in throughout this month. And, you know, it was a Shutter movie. I didn't know if it, that it was even coming to theaters. I was like, okay, Santa going on a killing spree. Okay, yeah, if I got time, whatever. And then it turns out that this was actually coming to theaters, which one of them, uh, one of the theaters it was coming to in my town was right in the same neighborhood as me. So I was like, fuck it. It's 1030 in the morning. I got nothing to do today. Let's watch Santa kill some people. Basically, I had no real expectations about this movie and I'm glad I saw it because I fucking enjoyed this movie man so for anybody that saw Violent Night and was disappointed because they were kind of you know thinking that it was gonna be a horror film about Santa just killing off people don't worry this is your movie man this one will make up for it also while we're on the subject of uh, Shudder but I just want to note real quickly before this movie started, they actually played a teaser of an upcoming Shudder movie called Skinamarink. And holy fuck, man, I don't remember the last time I was so nervous during a fucking teaser trailer. In this house. This thing, man. Uh, yeah, I, I cannot wait for this. I don't know anything about it. And th this teaser is all I fucking need, man. But yeah, so this movie, uh, Christmas Bloody Christmas, I enjoyed the film. I really enjoyed the whole feel of it. So this film's got like a retro 80s, 90s, like heavy metal vibe about it. I actually don't know when it exactly takes place because all we really see as far as like, you know, the setup and background and everything of these characters anyway. Is so it centers on this group of friends that work in this record shop. And, uh, you know, while the film has an 80s and 90s retro feel, it's got that graininess. It's got that retro kind of like, you know, camera that, you know, Shudder is known to produce films that have that kind of, you know, feel. Things like, you know, Scare Package, VHS. It's got that kind of feel. But the thing with this film is that like, Throughout the movie, they're, like, you know, referencing, like, you know, movies and, like, talking and they have arguments about, like, music and, like, bands and, you know, things about, like, you know, Foo Fighters and 30 Seconds to Mars. And I'm like, okay, so it's not the 80s. It could be the 90s. <laughs> but I just, I, I, I really liked the whole vibe around it. You know, these characters, they felt very organic uh, in this kind of, like, you know, punk rock, edgy, like, you know, uh style of theirs you know that kind of gritty like you know record store shop kind of you know attitude you know they're very vulgar they're very raunchy the whole movie about these characters are just either arguing about music or you know bagging on christmas movies or they're talking about sex stories or you know bagging on each other for their sexual experiences just you know a group of you know punk rock punk rockers that you know work at a record store trying to party and having and have fun on christmas eve only to be interrupted by a robot giant toy Santa from a mall gone rogue. There's, and just going on a killing spree. It was like an 80s, 90s, like, punk rock version of, like, the movie Megan coming out. It was like Terminator meets Child's Play, like, centered around Christmas time, sprinkled with, like, small soldiers. But yeah, you know, these characters just... Everything about them, you know, their overall vibe, their moods with each other, their overall chemistry, you know, the, their emotions and kind of like, you know, what, like their dialogue and like their just overall, like, again, chemistry with each other. I just really dug it, man. It felt very familiar to me. It felt very natural, very humane for these kind of people. Like to the point where I'd say that, you know, be, like even before not only shit goes down, but even before I knew what was actually going to be of this movie, I mean, again, you know, I didn't see any trailers, I didn't read anything about this film, I wasn't really planning on seeing it, I went into this film completely blind, and before I even knew what was actually gonna be of this movie, I already knew who I was rooting for, and I was already like, okay, all I know is that shit is gonna go down, 
And when that happens, I know whose side I'm on. Now, one thing I do uh, want to talk about with this film is that this is a very short film. It is only 87 minutes. And with saying that, while I do respect, you know, everything, the background from the characters, the type of characters, their overall, you know, fluid dialogue and, you know, the way they flow with each other, I absolutely adored all of it. But it does take a long time to set up, which I still respect even regardless of like, you know, because I was kind of getting antsy. I'm like, okay, look. I really like the idea of this movie. Obviously, I'm here because I want to see a Robo Santa go on a fucking killing spree against a bunch of punk rockers. I, I want to see that. But at the same time, you know, I respected that this film, regardless of its r short runtime, how well and how much it was actually doing with, you know, s setting up these characters and, you know, really focusing on them. And again, you know, before shit even hit the fan, or this, you know, movie even got started, you know, a good maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes or something, something like that, you know, before the movie really gets going, it was just these characters just, you know, being characters with each other, and I was, like, already, like, yeah, I'm, I'm on board, man, like, we're 20 minutes into this short-ass movie, we haven't even seen the Santa yet, I'm, I'm all for it. But, uh, you know, going back into, like, you know, criticism sort of, like, aspect about this, you know, there are times where these people will have, you know, conversations and, you know, the dialogue will just go left and right and just, you know, constant back and forth, like, you know, it'll show these people talking in, you know, the record store for, like, you know, 10, 15 minutes, and then they go to a bar, talk for, like, another few minutes, and at the same time, you're like, look, I really like these characters, we obviously have a good idea of them now, and I like that they're getting this set up and getting fleshed out, but, like, this is already a short movie. Where is Robo Killer Santa? But I will say this, when, you know, Robo Santa actually comes into the picture full blast and, you know, he's actually taking down people, it was such an actual fucking ride. How they portrayed this character was so damn fun. This thing was like several feet tall, right? And he's a giant robot Santa. And it's like when he's killing people, a lot of the time you're seeing it through like a point of view. It looks kind of like, you know, VR. And it's like, again, this guy's like, you know, seven feet tall. So it's like it takes place in like a mall on Christmas Eve night. So he'll be like walking in like a store and you'll see like, you know, like 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 him just hovering over the, all the fucking aisles. You see all the way out of the store in the mall because you're seeing it from his point of view as he's like stomping around with like lasers trying to axe people off and shit. When he's actually, you know, the center and they're actually doing stuff with him, which I'm not saying that, you know, it doesn't do it a whole lot, but like when it does do it, it does it very fucking well, and it is very fucking fun. Which is another thing I kind of want to address in this movie, is that, like, as far as, like, the story here, like, you know, how everything gets going, I don't really recall how it all actually happened. And I was paying attention, man, again, I really like this movie. <laughs> but then I, like, looked it up after, after seeing the movie, I was like, okay, I want to, like, see what was actually going on here. And there's other reviews saying, like, look, we don't know how it started, we don't know exactly what the story is, but it doesn't matter, and that's exactly where I'm at. It doesn't matter how it all actually started or where, you know, it's actual, like, you know, intro was. We came here to watch a robo, you know, Santa gone, gone rogue just killing people on Christmas, and that is very well done. You know, his kills, the way that they flesh that kind of character out, it is very fun. The characters are very fun. The background, I really dug. But again, you know, with, with, with this story, with me, you know, like, not really knowing where where it's, you know, real, like, intro was or, like, how it all began and how it all started and got to where it was. W with saying that, I also want to say that there are characters that just kind of come in and out of the story, which, like, it's not a bad thing. It's not like, you know, some char character will come and they'll have, like, a huge arc and then they'll leave and you'll be, like, really confused and they'll jump from one thing to another. It's not like that, but, like, you know, it'll just throw in random people just for the sake of random kills. And I know that sounds like it could be bothersome, but the way they did it, they didn't spend very much time on it. They, you know, addressed it very quickly. They executed it very quickly. And these kills were very original and very fun. And even the people that are getting killed, you're like, wow, they went there. So it really kind of works out. It, again, what I liked about this movie is that it is a very dumb idea, but it's not a dumb movie. It is a silly movie made by a very talented cast and crew. And, you know, with saying that, while this is a dumb, silly movie, you know, they obviously know that people want to see Robo Santa killing people. And they do that. You know, there are a couple kills that are just, you know, for the fuck of it, let's just throw this kill there. Let's just throw this character here and have Santa go at it. But the movie doesn't overdo it and it is not excessive. And that's what I really liked about it is that when it happened, you weren't really expecting it to happen. And when it did happen, again, it was very minimal. 
And, you know, those times where it does happen, it is very, you know, it does it a lot of justice. It is very original. It is very violent. It is very unexpected. And I really admired that. You know, this wasn't one of those movies where, like, you know, you're yelling at the at the screen. You're, like, you know, getting annoyed with the characters because they're making dumb decisions or you, you know, really like them. And then, you know, come the second, third act, they just get stupid. This wasn't that movie at all. And it seemed like it was going to be that movie. Everything from the production to, like, just the idea, it seemed like it was going to be that. And it wasn't. In fact, the only time I was yelling at the screen, which was fine because it was a 10.30 showing and there was nobody there. I was the only one in the theater, so I was like, good. I like this movie. I'm rooting for these characters. This guy's trying to kill him. I'm going to be yelling. <laughs> but that's another thing that I really liked about this movie as well is that throughout the whole movie, I was still rooting for the same people throughout. Now, I will say this. The last act, to me, is the weakest aspect of the film. There are actually a few characters that, you know, come in and, you know, that I don't like their decisions, I don't like their characters at all. The last act is also very action-based, which it isn't a bad idea, you know. Action and horror, you know, happens and everything for, for movies. And even, like, the way that it's done in this movie is, you know, fine. It just wasn't my thing. And the overall ending itself, I like the idea and I think that it could have been executed well especially with how much I liked about the movie before, but it did take a little bit of time getting everything going and getting, you know, to its, you know, uh, conclusion and everything. And while I do think that it's a good ending overall, it wasn't as climatic as I, you know, would have hoped for. But this movie, man, it's very metal, it's very organic with that, it's sexy, it's goofy, and both it's humor and it's horror, and it just worked for me, man. I'm going to give Christmas Bloody Christmas a positive review, obviously. Yes, guys, that is going to do it for my review of Christmas Bloody Christmas. Uh, I really enjoyed this movie. I'm happy that it's on Shudder because I am a big fan of Shudder. I genuinely, genuinely uh, like their movies. And for those that thought this movie was going to be, you know, cheap, or just going to be a waste of time, or didn't even want to go to a theater, just kind of wanted to, you know, kind of sit from home still and just watch movies from there, put this damn thing on, man. Click this on right now because you will not be disappointed. But yes, guys, that is going to do it for this review. Let me know what you thought about it as well as the movie for those that did see it. My next review will be in a couple days of the Christmas tape starring Greg Sestero. <sighs> the goofiness is almost over this week, guys. It's almost done. But yes, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. Let me know what you thought about the video down below. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a great day. Take care, guys.